This tutorial is part of our full stack React Django DRF channels project, DJ Chat. You can watch this tutorial and many more from our YouTube course playlist, or the whole course, including access to additional resources from our Udemy course. The Udemy course link, which provides the best price for the course, is in the video description. React Router is a library that allows us to add client-side routing to our application. So it's going to allow us to create routes or URLs that map to specific components in our application. So if you're familiar to, for example, creating HTML web pages, you know that you need to create a hyperlink and that would take you to a different resource. So this is very similar to that, except for those resources are not HTML pages here in React, they are components. So we're going to need to route two different components. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about React Router, there's a great page or great resource for this. Uh, that is the React Router homepage. So you can go ahead and take a look at a tutorial and uh, maybe look at some of the different resources that are available. Right, so we're going to install this. So let's take a look at the tutorial. Um, so we're going to go ahead and install npm install React Router DOM. And then we go ahead and set this up. So back into our project, we now need to be very careful about how we work in terms of making sure that we use the right command in the right directory. So if you are continuing the project from previous tutorials, you're probably already in the right directory. But if you're not, it's important that we understand how to move forward and backwards in the directory in order to run the right command in the right place. Now, here in Visual Studio Code, we can create additional terminals uh, so that we can have a terminal for eventually we're going to need the Django server running and as well as that we're going to need the React server running as well so we'll probably be utilizing multiple terminal windows but for now we don't necessarily need to do that but it's important for us to learn the basics of moving around the directory so I type in ls here on the Mac or on Windows um, dir maybe on Windows uh, to access and view currently where I am. So here I can see by looking at these files here, I can identify the directory that I'm currently in, in terms of this terminal window here, and that's inside the React Chat folder. So it's important if I'm working with the React Chat application that I'm inside of this folder in the terminal so that I can run appropriate commands. So I only want to run npm commands here and not anywhere else. So just make sure that you've navigated to that. So remember, dot dot dash, that's going to take you back. So cd dot dot dash, that's going to take you back a folder. So if I type in ls now, that takes me back to the, the root directory here. And I can then type in cd and then react chat, use tab to finish off the name of the folder, and then press enter. And now I'm inside of the react chat folder again. So it's important we remember where we are and how to access different folders. Right, so I press Command and K or type in CLS on Windows to clear that. Right, so let's go ahead and now npm install React Router DOM. So now we need to create a router, which is essentially a list of all routes that are available for our application to navigate to. Let's just describe it like that. So we're going to describe the routes or the links that are available and then we can then utilize those to create navigation throughout our application. So what we're going to do in SRC, inside of our app here, this is where we're going to set up, just drop this down, this is where we're going to set up our router. Right, so we're going to need some resources. First of all, let's go ahead and uh, let's import some resources. So we're going to need, um, and I'll explain them shortly, the create browser router. So we need that comma, or we're probably going to need a root and the root provider. So let's just stick with that for now. If we need anything else, we can definitely grab it. So the root provider. So those are three resources that I'm going to start off with. So I'm just going to move that across so we can see it. Now I'd say there's, there's quite a steep learning curve potentially utilizing React Router. Um, because there are so many different approaches. I think that's um, one of the most difficult things to potentially overcome. And the fact that this is now what version 6.11, and there's quite a lot of breaking changes from different versions. So there's a lot of information out there on the web, 
if you wanted to kind of get some different examples, etc. But you'll find that there are different, so many different versions of examples out there that it's very hard sometimes to put everything together. And although you may have had a look through the documentation, it doesn't always uh, meet or it doesn't necessarily always provide information about your specific requirements. So one of the first things we need to do is pick our router. So you can see there are many different types of routers here. So, you know, you could be spending the first half an hour trying to define which particular router you want to try. So we're going to be utilizing the Create Browser Router to start off with. As you can see, if you look at the documentation, this is the recommended router for all React project or React router web projects. OK, so we're going to be utilizing that. That's going to give us the tools to create our router or describe our routes. Now, something else that can be quite complicated, even in this documentation, is the fact that they present the information using two different approaches. Or oh, sorry, we create the different routes with two different approaches. So you can see this type of approach here. It's probably better seen in, for example, if I go to route here, you can see this type of approach here, which is um, uh, a little more maybe concise way of defining routes. And you can then compare this to this type of approach here, which is a second approach, which is probably more traditional way or in React Router to um, create your routes inside of the root element here. So this is declaring routes with JSX. Now it does specify or it does inform us here that in actual fact for the majority of the documentation it does utilize the JSX style. So we will be utilizing this style to define our routes. So then back into our application. Now I apologize for maybe the lack of detail there. I tried to skim that information because ultimately we could spend the next 10 minutes to our chatting about it. But hopefully I've given you enough information to explore further if you would like to or else just carry on developing. Right, let's get back. Right, so first of all then let's go ahead and create a new router. So we're going to use the create browser router for this. And then we need to, because we're using this JSX, J, JSX style, uh, we're going to be utilizing the create root, uh, what is it, create root from element. Okay, and then we go ahead and define some roots. So I'm going to wrap this in root. And then I'm going to add a new root. I don't necessarily need to do that, but Let's go ahead and do that. And so we're going to add new roots here. Now that doesn't need to open and close. That can just be closed there. And then inside of here, let's now define a path. So the root directory for our application is slash. OK, and then we want to define the element we want to use. So we've already created a new component. That was the home. So we just define that right here. There we go. Right, so what we're going to need to do then is, because we've specified home, we're going to need to make sure that it is actually imported. So let's go ahead and in and import that. So let's import home from. That's going to be... So we need to understand where we are in this folder, file directory. Now we're in this root SRC, and we want to go into pages. So it's just dot to refer to this directory the app is currently in, and then slash then that will take us then into the pages folder. Inside of this folder, we have the home. So we're basically just calling this component. And of course, we're calling this component what's going to be returned, whatever's inside of the constant, which is this return here, which is this information here. So that's what's actually going to be then returned. So whenever we click on, or whenever we go to the root directory of our application, it's going to present us that component, which is the home component. So hopefully what will appear on the screen is just home, the word home. Now, what we need to do here is make sure that we actually have a way of presenting this information now. So we are going to need to return something. Uh, so let's go ahead and do exactly that. So const uh, app, so this is a react.fc equals. So we're just creating a new function here. 
which is going to return everything. So return. So what do we want to return? Well, we want to return the uh, router provider. So we want to use a root provider. And then we put in our supply our router. That's the router we've just defined. Root equals router. And that's pretty much it there. Now, you may not be familiar with TypeScript. We are using TypeScript. And I'm kind of trying to integrate this into the project without making it feel a bit overwhelming. And at the same time, introduce you to some of the concepts of utilizing TypeScript, assuming that you've never used TypeScript before. So what we've done here then, uh, so this line up here, this then defines a new constant variable called app. Okay, and that is a functional component. So the React FC there, this syntax is a type of annotation that specifies that the component is of type React FC, which is short for React function component. So this line also uses the arrow syntax to define the function component. And then we have the return. So this is what's going to be returned should we call the app the app functional component here. So what's going to be returned here then is the router. So anytime we use a, a child component, if you like here, to if we, for example, navigate to home, it's also going to provide the router information. So we're going to be able to access all of the routes here that we define in our router. Right, so what we've done here is we returned our router. Now, by doing that, we'll be able to identify that if we navigate to the home page, this is the component that should be displayed. And now let's remember here what's happening. So we have the index page, which is connected to the main. This main here incorporates or imports app. So that will then get initiated. When this app gets initiated, let's take a look at what happens. So the default export is app, which is referring to this right here. So we're going to be returning the router, which is then going to determine the fact that, oh, okay, we're on the home page. Therefore, we need to show the home component. So I guess at this point, we need to give it a go. So let's give it a go. Right. So let's go ahead and oh, it's not there. So npm uh, run dev. OK, so we start the server up again. Let's, just, let's take a look. And there we go. So we're now showing oh, it's now showing the new home component. Or should I say it's now serving the home component. So if I were to navigate away from slash, you can see that we get this error here. So just to show you this in action, let's imagine the path was hello. OK, so we changed the path to um, hello. So if we now go back into the browser, uh, let's type in slash this time hello. And there we go. So that takes us back to the home. So hopefully you can start to see that router in place and what it's going to be doing for us. Of course, we're going to have multiple paths set up so that we can navigate to different components. Well, let's just make sure we change that back to slash. And there we go. So we have our first route. Like I said, I'm going to try and incorporate some information about TypeScript, assuming that you are completely new to TypeScript. Now, assuming you are completely new to TypeScript, this probably isn't the best way to learn TypeScript. But TypeScript is a programming language that adds static type checks to JavaScript. OK, so it can help catch errors at compiler time. And it does provide or can provide better tooling and IDE support, which can improve the developer experience and potentially reduce the number of bugs in the code. Now, here in the context of React, TypeScript can be used to add type safety to React components and their props. So props are data potentially that we can add in. So if we wanted to pass in some data into this uh, function here, let's go ahead and say we wanted to pass in uh, some sort of number of I don't know, number of balls uh, we want. To, I don't know why I've come up with that. Number of balls we wanted to pass in here. Um, then I'm sure I can quickly think of our uh, name. There we go. So we wanted to pass a name in here to utilize this name. So we could pass this data in through this prop here. Now, what we ought to do and what TypeScript will make us do is to identify the type of data that we're expecting this name to be. So we describe what type of data that is. Now here, because we've add react.fc, you can see that we've got the yellow underscore line suggesting that we haven't actually used it yet. So let's just go ahead and console.log. 
uh, let's go for name, right? So you can see everything's happy now. Um, so everything's happy. We passed in this prop here and we're going to use this prop inside of our functional component here to output it to the terminal with console.log. Now notice that when I take away this here, notice now that it goes red uh, because it now tells us that the parameter name implicitly has an any type. So it's essentially saying that we haven't defined the type of data that's being passed in. So going back to what I said originally, TypeScript is a programming language that adds static type checks to JavaScript. So it's going to add a, a way of defining what type of data this is. So we want to define that. So um, in order to do that, you notice that previously we had this here, react.fc, which is describing um, the type, or is trying to describe maybe the type of data that's being inserted here, which is completely incorrect, but hopefully you get the general idea of what we're going to need to start doing once we start to build this application through TypeScript. We are going to need to start to actually define the type of data that we're working with. So let's just remove this here. Let's pretend we are actually going to use name. So what we can do is we could say, for example, this is a string. Okay, so that would be a valid way. So simply what, essentially what we've done here is we've added some additional metadata to define the type of data that we're expecting this name to be. So if someone tried to use this um, parameter here, sorry, if someone tried to use sorry this prop here, um, and they tried to add a Boolean to name, well, that isn't going to be possible because we're expecting this to be a string. So if we try to make name into an integer, a number, then we can't do that either. So hopefully you can start to see how utilizing TypeScript and adding static type checking to JavaScript might potentially help improve the overall quality of our code and help reduce the number of errors in our code. So let's just revert that back. Now we don't have to, this is a bit verbose, actually defining um, React FC here. We don't necessarily need it at this point. Um, so we can just remove that for now. So that's what we ended up with then in our app file here. So just one other point to make, uh, because I don't think I mentioned it just yet, and I've kind of overlooked it at this point. You'll notice the file extensions that we are using here. So I made the home component here a TSX extension. So the TSX file extension is used for TypeScript files that contain JSX syntax. So if you're not familiar with JSX syntax, it's worth going online now and having a quick look and getting a general idea of what JSX is. So it is a syntax extension for JavaScript that allows us to write HTML-like syntax with your JavaScript code. So because in here, we are potentially going to create um, returns which has JSX components or syntax, then we're utilizing the TSX extension. Now, some of the files that we make won't have the X because it doesn't include any JSX syntax. So we don't necessarily need to define that, but that's why we're doing it. So the TS file extension on the other hand then is going to be used for regular TypeScript files that don't contain any JSX syntax. Now, hopefully that brings us up to date. If it doesn't, then by all means, don't forget we have now ChatGPT. You can just copy and paste this code into there, maybe ask it to describe line by line, describe what's happening, and that will give you some additional information if you need some additional support with the code.